Hi guys. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can see me good. Um, it is Venetia and I'm back with another video. I know it's been, I think, upwards of like three years. I don't even know um, how long it's been. Um, I know I finished nursing school a long time ago and then I know I filmed like a where have I been video and then I didn't film anything after that because I just didn't know what was going on. So life was busy. Um, everything's busy. Work was busy. I am... <laughs> I'm such in a different place now um, than when you guys last seen me. I don't even know. Oh my gosh. I have to go back and watch that video to see where I was last, my updates, all that stuff. Um, <laughs> I'm going to watch that video really quick because I obviously didn't prepare. I just picked up the camera. Um, and then I will be right back. Okay. <laughs> Better lighting um, than the first clip I did. Okay. I just watched that video that I filmed three years ago, guys. Oh my gosh. It was in the height of COVID, COVID, April of 2020. That's insanity. We have went through so much since then. We bought a house. We sold a house. Um, we've moved so many times, it feels like. Um, <laughs> since then, we've moved, I think, three times because we moved into a house in May of 2020. Um, and then we moved out of a house in October of 2021, I want to say. And then we moved to an apartment that we hated. So we lived there for, I think, a year. We did our lease and then we came to this apartment. So we've lived four places because in that video that you guys watched in 2020 I was in an apartment so life has been crazy what's surprising is me going to start midwifery school so I start school on Monday guys January 8th and I'm so excited um, a lot of people don't know I'm going to school so people who watch this will eventually know um, my school that I'm going to is in Kentucky um, but I'm really excited to start school I'm nervous obviously I've been out of school for four years I don't love school I don't like papers I don't do I do well in school but I have to really apply myself um, to do well in school but it's just a quick video of me starting my midwifery journey um, I am also a little tidbit now travel nursing I've been travel nursing since January of 2022 so now I've been travel nursing for two years which is literally crazy but yeah so Going back to April of 2020, and this camera might die, and I'm so sorry. It has, like, no battery because we don't use it ever. Um, but anyways, um, April of 2020, I was working on postpartum, and I started labor training June of 2020. So when I saw you guys last, I was a postpartum nurse, and now I'm a full-blown labor nurse, which is crazy. I've had so many deliveries. I love it. I've even had some nurse deliveries when the doctor has not made it. Um, but it's crazy. So I started... You guys probably know this because I said that in that video, but I started postpartum May 1st of April of 2019. So when you guys saw me, I was a full year as a postpartum nurse. And then at the facility I was at, um, you would train for a full year as postpartum. And then you would do like nursery, which our version of nursery is like catching and clean the baby off, you know, after the doctor delivers and stuff. Um, and then you start labor training. So I started labor training in June of 2020. Um, I loved it. I hated it actually a lot. And then I started to love it after I came back from maternity leave. I have a baby. If you guys don't follow me on social media, I will leave my handles somewhere. Um, but I do have a, he's not even a baby anymore. He was born March of 2021. So he's two and a half. He'll be three in March um, of this year, which is literally crazy that I have a child. Um, but yeah, so I have a kid, um, a labor nurse for now, going on four years what the world that is literally insanity okay going on, going on four years of labor nursing um in june june 10th was my first day of 2020 um what else is new i've traveled nurse to iowa very small hospital um i travel nurse to california for the summer again if you watch my social media you've probably seen some of my snaps from california um i travel nurse in local so kind of like in north dakota places um for the last year i was in somewhere in north dakota called dickinson um unbeknownst to anybody else but i was in um there for a year and now i'm somewhere else in north dakota so i love it um the hospital i'm at right now i really love because they have epic as a charting system the hospital before this did not have epic and it was just so much charting and they had so much paper but we're done with that so we're in a new adventure and i love it at this hospital everybody's welcoming everybody's nice um the charting is not as much because i'm used to it because my my main facility that I trained at was epic so it's just been amazing um a girl i met in one of my north dakota assignments she's the one who told me i should go be a midwife and i'm like absolutely not and here i am about to start school um i'm in the office right now it is a mess i will show you guys 
a tour of everything and like what I have written down and stuff like that. Um, cause we're going to do videos again, guys. I am going to be committed. I do want to show you guys a vision board as well that I have and YouTube is on there. I am going to be committed. I just felt like I had nothing to talk about before, but now that I'm back in school, I have searched high and low left and right for YouTube videos on midwifery and I can't find a single one in the U S besides people passing one person passing her boards and another one is maybe a little like short or whatever they're called now real kind of on youtube the other ones have all been uk london europe like everywhere else in the world i'm like well i think there should be videos for midwife students in america that are doing through school so i'm back guys i am back for good um i don't know if i'll be doing it every week i don't know if i'll do it every two weeks i don't know what i'm doing yet school starts monday um but i am back i'm back to filming videos so um what else is there so i applied for my program and actually <laughs> So a girl I traveled with in one of my North Dakota assignments in July and September of, oh my God, I can't even say last year. It was July to September of 2022, which is insanity because um, I can say last year, but I can't anymore. So July to September of 2022, I was in a hospital in Fargo, North Dakota, traveled there. There's small world. This girl I met, she actually lives like in the other town right next to mine. Um, and we found out we knew the same people, like ran in the same circles kind of, but we just never met. Um, we worked with the same people, all the things. She worked at my hospital previously. She told me I need to go to midwife school or midwifery school. I said, absolutely not. I hate school. I don't like deadlines i don't like people telling me i have a discussion due at this time no i don't i'm a procrastinator okay i have control issues i don't like that um and i don't like writing papers that's my biggest thing um tests i can i can muddle through a test but writing papers i'm just not articulate enough i just feel like so i did not want to go back to school for the longest midwifery was never on my mind school was never on my mind but she saw how i interacted with my patients and the physicians and I'm a huge patient advocate, always be a patient advocate if you're a nurse or anybody, if you be a people advocate. And she told me I need to go back to school. And I was like, well, I'll look into this school in Kentucky. We'll see. I looked into it. I really liked it. But I was like, eh, I don't know. And I had to get all this stuff in. Um, I think when I was looking at to apply in September of 2022, you needed to have a letter of recommendation and all these things. And I think the cutoff of the deadline was like January. So I was like, man. I don't know. I probably won't do it, but like, it's nice to have that seed planted in my brain. So planted the seed. Um, I kept going back. Hi guys. I'm going to be back on my phone. Um, my GoPro has died. I told you guys we haven't used it in forever and it was on 3% and I'm happy it got me that video. Um, but, um, what was I saying? Oh, took the month of October off in 2022. And um, we went to Mexico for the first time. We went and visited my parents and went to our church's general conference. We did so much stuff. It was so good. Travel nursing gives you endless possibilities. It's so flexible. I haven't worked a holiday um, since going into 2022. So like my last holiday I worked was December, January of 2021. Um, and I worked this New Year's coming into 2024. So I haven't worked a holiday guys in two years, which I can't complain. Um, so anyways, yeah. So the deadline closed in January. I think it was, I didn't have anything. I could have gotten things ready, but I was just like, man, like, it's nice to just know that it, it, I have an option for school or whatever. Um, and the school that she was telling me to go to, like, is like the foundation of like midwifery and everything. So I thought about it and I said, I don't know yet. Like, like let's just, put, I, I'm thinking about it. Let's just put it on the back burner. Then I started my assignment in November of 2022. I did that whole assignment for one year. So I just finished last year, November, so 2023. And, um, but I like, okay, let's go back. So I started my assignment in November of 2020. Two, um, and the whole time I'm doing that assignment, I'm like thinking, oh, maybe should may, maybe I should, maybe I should. I don't know yet. So then, um, I finally decided I'm not like we'll wait because my husband's in school full time. That's pretty much why I'm travel nursing to support us. And I was like, I'll just wait my turn, um, to go to school. Like we'll let him finish, and then I got just bugging my butt on Easter randomly, and I was like, I'm gonna apply. So I think it was April 9th. I think Easter was last year. So April 9th, I sent in my, I filled out the application, sent in my stuff. Didn't need a letter letter of recommendation anymore at that time. Um, in my previous or in the previous clips before this, I said in September, I think you did. Um, when I applied in August or April of 2023, you did not anymore. So I just sent in my resume, cover letter, all the things. You had to write like an essay. That was like 500 words of how you would change the midwifery practice or whatever. So I wrote an essay like that. I worked on it at work and a girl helped me because I'm, again, I'm not articulate. So somebody at work helped me write it. Um, and then I sent that in and I got a response on so it was april i submitted on easter april 8th or 9th they said it takes like you know six weeks or whatever because they have to wait for more people to apply and i think i got a letter on 
April, May, May something like towards the end of, end of May. I got a letter or an email um, saying that I'm accepted, but not really. I'm on the waiting list. They they see everything that they love about me and based on my paperwork that I sent in, but they already accepted the amount of people they can. So they put me on a waiting list. Um, I found that at work and I called my husband and I was like crying and I was sad. And he's like, why you're in? I'm like, I'm not in though, because the way they did the waiting list, they could deny me at any point um, or they could accept me at any point. And we have to, according to my school, we have to go to something called front, we have to go to something called bound, um, which is like an orientation pretty much. And you have to, I live obviously in North Dakota, the school's in Kentucky. So you have to fly there, drive there, whatever. <clears throat> but they can also let you know up to a week before your bound date that you choose, um, if they deny you or accept you or whatever, if they defer you, which is mean going to the next term, or if you have to go, like they just completely say, Yo, you're not accepted. So I'm like, Matthew, I don't feel secure in this email, but that's fine. Like God's going to do what he wants. I know he's in control. I have to just let go and let God, you know? So I just stopped. So I just glare my glasses. Um, so I just let it go. I said, okay, you know, whatever, Lord, I'm, I'm going to accept this. At least I'm on the waiting list. Say, know my name. My name is planted in their facility or their, um, their school. So we're just going to go with that. Um, then I worked at my PRN job and I was working on my mom's birthday, June 6th. I'm never going to forget this day. June 6th, I got an email saying you have been accepted to which and which school. And I literally called my husband right away. Cause I was just like checking my email. I'm an email checker. And I was just checking my email and I was like, this this is accepted. And I got two emails and I was like, so I literally cried, went into the bedroom, called my husband. I'm like, I got accepted, I got accepted. And that felt real because I wish I had that recorded, but I also love that moment that it's just like, I just found out randomly. Like I was just checking my email. Um, but that, that was an amazing moment that felt real. I was just, so, that's when I was like excited. Cause I'm like, Oh my gosh, I'm accepted. Um, long stories coming with that, but I got accepted. Um, I chose my bound date or whatever for September 11th. So it's like three days, um, or two and a half or one and a half. So you go, the first day doesn't start until like 4 or 30 PM or whatever. And then the second day is like a full day. Then the third day it finishes at like two 30. So it's, I guess it's like two full days if you think about it. Um, so I did my bound date for September 11th. I scheduled it. I bought my tickets, all the things like the same day. Cause I was so excited and I was nervous to fly on 9-11. And let's fast forward to 9-11. 9-11 comes around. Um, we dropped my son off at our mom's house, my mother-in-law's house, my, mom, my mom's house. And she, he's going to spend the night there because my flight is early. So my husband can take me to the um, airport. So we get up, not normal. I'm getting, I've showered. I've packed already. I'm so excited. I get an email from Delta that my flight has been delayed by two and a half hours. And I'm like, oh gosh, which flight? Because I have a, so many flights. I'm like, which flight? And... Um, happened to be my Minneapolis flight because North Dakota where I live you don't just fly to your destination you have to go to Minneapolis um to like do your whatever delay relay whatever it's called so um turns out that flight is when I got canceled so I'm still getting dressed I go to the airport still because I'm like maybe we can figure something out go to the airport I'm like I don't know if you guys can help me but the time I was supposed to okay let me get this straight the time I was supposed to land in Kentucky was the time now that I was leaving Atlanta. So I was supposed to go from Bismarck to Minneapolis, Minneapolis to Atlanta, Atlanta to Kentucky. So a lot of planes. But now the time that I was supposed to leave Atlanta to go to Kentucky changed to the time I was supposed to land in Kentucky, guys. And that was the last flight going into Kentucky. So I bawled my eyes out and she's like, I've checked every airline, everything, and I cannot find a flight. And my father-in-law, who's amazing, offered to drive me to Kentucky because he was going to Kentucky anyways, but it's like a 17, 19 hour drive and he was leaving at nine and my orientation had to be there by four. That doesn't, the math ain't mathing. So I couldn't go. So I called my, I sent a big email, called my, cause they tell you what to do if you can't, like if something happens, sent an email, it wasn't office hours yet or anything, called, left a message. She called me back and I was just like gallons, when I tell you gallons of tears, came from my eyeballs. It was just so sad. And I just didn't understand. And I was just like, so sad. Um, sorry for the glare. I don't know how to get away from the glare. Um, so I was just so sad. And my advisor is like, I can do a couple things. I mean, I'm going to try. She's like, there's a things we can do. One, we can, um, I can talk to my immediate supervisor and they can deny me and I can go up another, you know, supervisor and see if they'll let me just defer you again, meaning put you in the next term. You only can get deferred twice in my program. So this would be my first deferment. And I said, okay, bawling. I'm like, <laughs> like, like I just got a spanking. 
Second thing I can do is I can talk to my immediate supervisor and they can just move you to the next term or I can just move you to the next term. I said, okay. Third thing was the worst option. She said, I can talk to my immediate supervisor and they can talk to their bosses or whatever. And if they say no, then you go back into the applicant pool. Now, my school, you had to pay $600, $700 pretty much to for orientation, for the shuttle, all the things, all everything, because they feed you. They do every, They give you a dorm to stay in, all the things. So you pay $700. Plus I paid for my ticket already that I was getting reimbursed. But I paid all this money and I said, back into the applicant pool like I'm a nobody and then they have to re-accept me so I literally start crying again because I'm like that could be an option you know that could happen so I was just so confused I was lost I was just a mess so then I'm like okay see what you can do so we hang up she calls me back about 20 minutes later I'm still bawling because I'm like oh my gosh what is she gonna tell what is this lady gonna tell me and she tells me I didn't even need to go up anymore I talked to my supervisor and we are just gonna defer you for the winter term I said thank you Jesus but still, I was still sad. I was still everything because, you know, like that was the day. So all day that day and the next day and the next day I was off work and I was just laying in bed and I'm like, I'm supposed to be in Kentucky. I'm supposed to be meeting friends. Like I got my schedule, all the things for like the orientation. I was just like, I was really sad, but I just said to myself, God knows what he's doing. I didn't want to fly on 9-11 anyways, just because it's 9-11. I know it's been 20 something years, but it's still kind of like nerve wracking. I know there, there was actually a lot of people in the airport, but um, yeah, I don't know. The Lord did whatever he wanted to do for a reason. I can't question it. I just know that I was meant to be in this year starting school. So it's fine. Um, I switched my, I got accepted into the winter term. Um, I switched my orientation date. So I went to orientation from December 6th to the 8th, but instead I flew out a day earlier. So I left for Kentucky on the 5th because I wasn't playing those games and I just stayed in a hotel there. And then the next day I went to the school. Um, but I was just so nervous. I was like, I'm not leaving the same day because I'm not going to have the same thing happen again. Um, so that's where I've been with that. Um, again, my school was three days of orientation. I didn't film anything, but it was amazing. I met the best people. Um, our school had color coded lanyards. So midwifery students had pink. Um, if you were an FMP student, so family nurse practitioner student, excuse me, you wore orange. And then if you were a psych or, um, psych mental health, so PMHNP, um, so psych mental health nurse practitioner, you were wearing green, I want to say. Um, like a lighter green so we got to like you got to just see people right away like oh they're going to the same track I'm going or they're going to this and like there was just like-minded people everybody wanted to like open a business or do better and it was just so good um and it was amazing and then we go back again so we do what's called didactic so all online school um and then we go back again for something called clinical bound meaning we go back to Kentucky for about a week and we learn at least nurse midwifery students we learn how to deliver babies how to suture those type of things and then you go for 750 hours of clinical so um i think i'm going to be starting clinicals next year um because i'm trying to take as many classes as I can. Right now I'm scheduled for three classes, which full-time is two, so I'm doing a little bit over full-time. Um, but a lot of people have said that certain classes aren't hard, they're just busy. So that's fine. The way my school does it is it's 11 week terms and then you're off for two weeks. So 11 weeks, two weeks off, 11 weeks, two weeks off. So I'm like, you can do anything for 11 weeks. So that's my school. Um, I know some schools I've kind of like seen or researched that some schools, they find your preceptor for you. My school does not. You have to go on. But we have this awesome, awesome resource called a community map. And you can literally go on there and type in any zip code or anything you want. Find clinical sites, find preceptors, find whatever um, and see who's approved. And you can even get people approved who aren't approved. Um, they have to go to this thing that you submit. But it's actually pretty cool. And it's actually not going to be as bad, I started looking for preceptors literally that day at <laughs> orientation because I'm like, I need to find people because I live in like a really rural area. There's no midwives. The closest midwife to me is three hours away. And honestly, they're not that busy. Um, there's two hospitals that have midwives. One of them aren't, isn't that busy. So I'm going to probably end up doing my clinicals somewhere else in like Iowa, Florida, South Carolina, somewhere um, so I can get it done because obviously the more busier the hospital, the more births and all those things because you need 40 births. Um, and a lot more other things, but 40 births um, to become a competent midwife and or to pass your schooling, I guess. Um, so I'm probably going to go where it's busier. So, yeah, but I will put, if I can, somewhere on the screen what we need for our clinicals, 750 hours. And we need all these. Um, I know it's 40 births, I think 40 labor managements, those type of things. So just because I have a birth 
or like if I come in on shift and I have a delivery, then that counts as a birth. But if I also come on and somebody's laboring and then I deliver, that counts as a labor management and a birth. Then I didn't have like preconception visits, antepartum visits, postpartum visits, all the things. I will put them somewhere. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to start school. Again, I start school Monday. Um, I will show you guys a setup of what I have going on. Um, but yeah, just stay tuned to see the setup that I have going on. Remember, like, subscribe, comment. Please tell me what else you want to see. Um, it doesn't only have to be midwifery videos. Just tell me what you're interested in. Tell me what you want to see. Um, if you're new here, my name is Venetia. I did videos when I was in nursing school, filming myself throughout the process. Every week I did videos. Um, I always look kind of busted. That's just like my thing. I don't know. I just don't, I don't wear makeup. I don't wear anything. I just, I'm just pretty chill. I am somebody you can relate to. Very down to earth, very chill. Um, and yeah, and then I graduated. I did my LPN, took the boards, passed those, and then I graduated with my RN in May of 2020, May of 2018. So I've been making videos for that long, and then I stopped for a long time because life got busy, got married, had a kid, all the things, and I probably could have filmed, but I just didn't. Um, and now I'm picking it up again. If you're old, you already know these videos are gonna be back. Okay, we're back. We're back to filming. I'm so sorry, so, so, so sorry I've been gone. People have been messaging me, when am I coming back? I'm back, okay guys? And if I don't post a video weekly or bi-weekly, whatever I come up with a schedule, then you guys have to be accountable and tell me that, hey, comment, you need to post. But otherwise, like, comment, subscribe. Um, I am back, I lost some subscribers, and I totally get it because I'm like that too. If my favorite YouTuber or somebody I really like watching has not made a video in a long time, I just unsubscribe. So I totally get it, but please subscribe, tell your friends, tell your midwifery friends if they're in school or nursing students, whatever. I am back, Venetia is back, and we're gonna film videos, and we're so excited, I'm so excited um, to go on this journey with you guys. It's gonna be scary, it's gonna be a lot, um, but it's just an update, I'm back, um, and I'm really excited to um, film videos with you guys again. Okay, bye.